Hello, it's Girl from A Girl and Her Librarian. My review today is The Portrait of Dorian Gray, or The Picture of Dorian Gray. And then you can spell Gray either with an E or an A. Things get a little murky. However, one absolute thing is that it is a brilliant book, and it was written by Oscar Wilde. When I was about 14, my dad was playing a song in the car. It was called The Portrait of and the band was Lion's Heart. And I thought, wow, that's a really good song. What's, you know, that's really good, I like that. And my dad said, you know it's from a book. And I was like, no. Um, Oscar Wilde? Nope, don't know him, not at all. And so I was given the book to read. It is pretty much a narration on vanity, on what vice does to you. We have Dorian, who inherits a lot of money, and his friend Basil Horwood is doing a portrait of him. But you see, Basil's friend, Lord Henry Wotton, comes to visit, and he doesn't want to introduce Dorian to Henry, because he thinks he'll corrupt him. Dorian is beautiful, good-looking, sweet, charming. But his friendship with Henry starts to open things up to him. Henry invites him into high society, to all the parties and drinks and theatre. When the portrait is finished, Basil believes that it is his most wonderful defining work ever. Now, Henry has been going on about the virtues of youth and beauty, how as every moment and hour tick by, you lose that beauty as you age. Dorian looks at the portrait of himself, its beautiful portrait, and he flippantly says he would give up his soul for the portrait to age and not him. It's a flippant remark. Basil decides that he doesn't want to put the portrait on display. He doesn't want to show it to other people. It has too much of himself in it. And so Dorian keeps it. Over the following years, first of all, Dorian starts to indulge in vice. He becomes corrupt. He falls in love with Sybil Vane, who is a actress. She falls in love with him. But she gives up acting because she thinks, well, I could never portray love on the stage because my love is true to Dorian. And she quits. He breaks their engagement off because to him, what she has, the acting ability, is what attracts him to her. Her ability to portray anything. A little while later, he's told that Sybil has killed herself. Now, Sybil's brother knows or believes that it's Dorian's fault. And so he stalks Dorian. The thing about this book is, no matter what Dorian does, no matter what vice he engages in, whether it be breaking hearts, being a scoundrel, going to brothels, opium dens, you name it, he does it, he tries it. He realises over the first couple of months that, especially after... Sybil dies, that the painting takes on like a sneer, like a an an un an unnice, if you could say that, a not nice sneer. And he thinks, well, I must be going mad. This the, the portrait's changed. Not able to look at the portrait anymore, he puts the portrait in the attic. And over the next eighteen years, he indulges himself in everything. But he stays beautiful and young. No matter what Dorian does, I still feel like I want him to succeed. I know, I know he's bad. I know he does horrible things. I know he breaks the heart of a young lady who ends up killing herself for it. I know that he commits murder in the book. I know he does. I'm not going to tell you who. It's a little bit, that's a little bit too much of a spoiler. 
But then he realises that he escapes to his estate. But Sybil Vane's brother is looking through the window. He says, I can't take this anymore. You know what? I'm bad. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done this. This is terrible. And so he goes up to the portrait and he, he vows, I'm going to be good. But the portrait changes a little and it almost sneers at him as if to say, you're a hypocrite. You say you will, but you won't. All these things you've done. Now Dorian dies in the end. How he dies? Well, I'll leave that for you to read. If you have read it, I cried when he died. The thing about Dorian is, is it speaks to all of us, even those of us who may say that we're not vain. We all look in the mirror sometimes as we grow older and think, oh, you know, my skin's not as beautiful or lustrous as it was before. Maybe my the way I walk is a little ouchy from arthritis or maybe I've, I don't know, got a bit of a crook in my nose because, well, I broke it a few times. And so we look at things as we want perfection, we want beauty, we want youth, we want vitality, we want possibility. Youth brings with it so much possibility and I think that's what Oscar Wilde was trying to look at and how vain it is to want to be beautiful and young all the time, that it does change and that you have to change with it, that you have to accept it, be the best you can be. Dorian Gray for me is written absolutely beautifully. I'm a fan of Oscar Wilde. This book has become my security blanket and yes, it's filled with vice and there's murder and there's tragedy but I don't know, I just, it becomes a security blanket. It's a book I know. I've read it 17, 18 times. The horror in Basil as he realises that, you know, Dorian's not ageing, he's not changing. He's as beautiful and vivacious as he was as an 18, 19 year old. And realising what is happening and sort of understanding what's happening with the painting. How it changes instead of Dorian. The agony in Basil that he's created this thing. He feels responsible. Is it the energy and the self that Basil puts into the portrait that allows it the, the magic and the power to allow Dorian to continue to be young and youthful? Sir Henry Wotton pushes him and pushes him into new heights. He's suddenly got a partner in crime that he can corrupt, that he can show all the things that he's done over the years and almost make them acceptable, that if Dorian, a young innocent, enjoys them, then perhaps it absolves Henry of his sins. Whoever comes out the hero here, and I'm not sure there is one outright, and whoever comes out the villain... I still love Dorian. I don't know whether I want to hold him and change him and help him. I don't know why, if it was any other person who did horrible things, that I wouldn't want to root for them. But I do with him. It's the way it's written and a testament to Oscar Wilde's writing, I think. I'm not sure he intended us to really root for Dorian, although I guess there's a thing in all of us that says I want to stay beautiful and young forever. And you can't you can't kind of condemn him for that because you might do the same thing. It's hard to be hypocritical when you think that perhaps in that circumstance you might have done the same. Thank you ever so much for listening. This is by far my favourite book ever and my security blanket. Thank you for listening. As ever, I've been Girl from A Girl and Her Librarian and I will let Mew Erin, who wrote the piece of music for the introduction, play us out. Take care. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe.